M-E-A-D-E-S Meads. Hello, this is Jerry Bates with Meads Discount Doors and More here to demonstrate this afternoon on how to assemble our value line kitchen cabinets. Now I want to iterate, this is not for the novice, this is for someone that is very handy or the professional with professional grade tools. Now let's go over your components with your, on your corner sink base or your Lazy Susan, which in this case is going to be. Just make sure that you look at each component, make sure it's in, uh, it's in good shape, there's no dings or dents. These are the face frames, you have two of those. Again, these are the toe kicks. Make sure they're, uh, they look in decent and good shape. You have one adjustable shelf in this one. You have one fixed shelf, which is the bottom of the cabinet, which is a half inch thick. You have two sides with the toe kick cut out. You have the finished side and then the inside with the holes for the for the clips for the shelf then you have the groove for the bottom you have the back again make sure that everything's in working order have the slot for the bottom you have a door which is attached in the center with two hinges you have the hinge holes here that you're going to put the European hinges on then you have your hardware packets. You have your hinges, you have your screws, and your corner brackets in one pack. You have your hinges in separate packets. You have your corner brackets. And then in this packet, you have your shelf clip all the screws that you'll need to assemble your cabinet. You have the door bumpers and also a magnetic clip for your, for your door to keep it in place. And then the last two items you have, this is the most compl complicated box. It has two more back panels, or side panels if you will, with the slots for the bottom and then the back panel fits in there. You have the holes cut in it for your adjustable shelf ends. Now let's go over the tools that you'll need in order to assemble your value line cabinets. You'll need a compressor with an air hose. You'll need a screw gun with a number two Phillips head, head, uh, head tip. You'll need a drill, rubber mallet, pencil, staples. You'll need a uh, measuring tape. You'll need a box cutter. This is your quarter crown stapler with 5 8 inch staples. This is a brad gun with 18 inch, uh, 18 gauge brads, an inch and a quarter. You'll need a caulking gun with adhesive caulk. Okay, we start with the face frame. You put adhesive into the slot where you're going to put your side. You get the corresponding side to go. Make sure that the toe kick cutout and the bottom cutout aligns with the cutout in your face frame. Flush it at the top. 45 degree angle on your staple gun. Okay, now we're putting the 
other side panel on, a little clear adhesive. Make sure that the groove for the back is away from your, the side that you're putting together. Make sure that the grooves are lined up here. Make sure everything is flush. Using your staple gun. side. Okay, now what we're doing is we're going to put the base or the bottom of the cabinet inside the box. Normally this is a two-man job, but since I'm by myself, I put it against something solid. There are two screw holes for the face frame. You attach the, the face frames together. I've already got adhesive in the slot for the bottom. And then all you have to do is just slide the bottom in the corresponding slots. It's usually easier said than done. Okay, now you get your back. There's a pre cut slot in here before you attach anything. Slide it into place. Get everything attached. Get your inch and eight screw. That'll hold that in place. Just to adhere the uh, size of the cabinet to the bottom of the cabinet, measure up five and a half inches from the bottom. And then put your brads in there. And all these will be hid with your other cabinets.
get your toe kick on. Flush the front. Flush on the bottom. Same with this side here. center. Okay. Now we'll put the corner braces on. Make sure the flange goes on to the top of the cabinet. on the doors. And then once you have the two screws in, the, in place, you can turn your turntable and through the pilot hole screws, you'll see the other screw holes that you can attach to the base of the cabinet. you get them all in place. And now it'll stop in its proper place and you have your bottom turntable in. Okay now on the upper shelf or the adjustable shelf you're going to do it just a bit different. What you do is you put your turnstile mechanism on the on the shelf itself. You use your uh, three-quarter inch pan head screws. What you'll do on your cabinet, this is a 33 inch cabinet and I'm pulling from the edge of the adjustable shelf nine and a half inches from this edge to this uh, flat plate here and on this edge it will be 14 inches from this uh, edge here to this plate. Now on a 36 inch you'll have to add three inches to this because the shelf will be of course uh, wider and just like the other shelf you've got holes here what you'll do is drill two pilot holes through these two shelves with your eighth inch bit and then Turn your turntable upside down. 
put your shelf on top of that. You'll align your shelf towards the front, making sure that the mechanism is in the lock position. You'll bring this back about a quarter of an inch from the face of the shelf. You'll push your turntable about a quarter of an inch from the face of the shelf. Then using your one inch screws, you'll go through your pre-drilled holes and just like the other one now you can turn the turntable to each cor corresponding screw hole Each one will get a shelf pin. And now you can put your shelf in there. And you have another turntable. There is a magnet mechanism. Okay. Pre drilled holes. You can just take a pencil and mark where that is. Put your plate on. M-E-A-D-E-S meets